Hi Tarot Souls, my name is Giselle and this is my channel Mad Witch. It's a very gloomy Saturday morning and I've got a lot of things I want to do today and uh, my friends do say to me I need to slow down and do less um, but <laughs> and they're probably right I do and yesterday I felt incredibly tired and I didn't really feel like doing anything um, but if I don't do this today I won't do it so I decided that I needed to get on and just tick it off the list so I wanted to share with you um, a deck that my husband purchased for me um, and I'm just going to slot in here I was watching Lisa from Supportive Tarot and um, I really felt for her because she was doing a depth year update and I think basically she voiced everything that we're all feeling about death year and how hard it is when you actually start to limit yourself and tell yourself what you can and can't do and what you can and can't have as to how hard that is to actually put into practice. Um, and I really resonated with her on, on quite a few issues. And I've kind of cheated because I, I sort of said that I wouldn't buy many decks. I wanted to work with the decks that I've got. And, and that is true. And I have and I am. Um, and since I got Instagram, I'm finding that easier to actually achieve it. But equally, I just get my husband to buy them, which I don't see as, as me buying decks because it's not, is it? I mean, you know, he's buying them for me. So... But one of the things that I've have found about depth year from my perspective is that um, the tarot in general, and I haven't been doing this a year yet, nearly, we're nearly there, but I'm learning so much about myself. And all the things that I thought I wouldn't do, I'm doing. Um, and, you know, I wasn't going to get particularly into witchcraft w wicca um but i found it fascinating and it's it's really evolved and i'm really enjoying it so um the decks that i'm buying are decks that i want for my evolution um, um there are decks that i'm collecting for collecting sake but that's separate again and if you're a collector and especially if you're a very new collector and you you want to collect tarot or in my case tarot de marseille um or tarot de marseille if you if i try to pronounce it correctly um is no collection if you don't have any decks and uh, i love tarot de marseille so um i love the historical side of it so i allow myself that indulgence when i can um because it is a collection so it has two different strands for me tarot um in its it, its larger um sense is for my spiritual growth they are tools and they all serve in their own way a very different um job um they have a, a character a personality and energy and they serve me differently um, whereas my Tarot de Marseille collection is for collections purposes. Anyway, so this deck, the Lion's Gate Tarot, for those of you, um, there are obviously going to be other walkthroughs of this, much better ones probably, but this is my little take on it, is a deck that I purchased very recently through my husband. <laughs> I, uh, uh, my eyes are watering. I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Um, and uh, I loved this deck the minute I saw it and I'm so so glad I, I got it it comes in a beautiful box um, which I, I will keep it in it because I, I actually really do like the box I think it's it's gorgeous um, I will make a bag for it as well actually because if I ever wanted to take it out anywhere I could sort of slip it out of the box into a bag so this is the little book that it comes with and it's lovely um, it's got this beautiful little sort of this, oh hold on poem at the front the coordinations as usual spot on uh, an index it has a section on how to work with the cards um, your daily practices and then it starts to go through and then it's not they're not too heavy um, 
they do them in she has done them the deck sorry the deck is by Jessica Lee Henry it could be Lay Henry but I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right um, so it goes through the major arcana obviously and then for the minor it goes through as in all the aces all the twos um, and then there's this really nice bit at the back for spreads and then the, the, there's a bit about the artist artist bio and process and this is a nice this is what I like about decks is when you hear from the artist and you get to understand how she came to name it how she made it all the processes that are involved with it um, I don't want to spoil it for people who who haven't uh, read it but um, she talks about how she um, uses uh, the, the burning process how she wanted to to draw it onto wood um, there's, there's just a lot of information about how the deck came into being I was hoping I might see there's a lovely little bit about how here we are how she made came up with the name um, She, the first image, the magician, was burned on the 8th of August 2017. The 8th of August is the day of the astronomic, astronomical lion's gate. So um, the brightest star being Sirius aligns with the pyramid, streaming light into the Queen's Chamber. So there's a lot of significance to uh, this deck and I, I just I, I fell in love with it. So I will show you the cards and I haven't got them in order because I have been working with them. They are the most delicious deck. They're, they're gilded on with the gold on the edge and they are a stunningly beautiful yellow I don't know how well that's going to show but um, it's really beautiful it's a beautiful deck um, it's very buttery that's the word we use isn't it this buttery feel and it's just gorgeous I love it let me just I've got a hazelnut coffee going here and I don't want it to get cold because um, we're all tucked up snuggled today we're going to do just bits and bobs I'm going to just do bits and bobs um, so this is I tick off my list if I do this I just think this is lovely the imagery here is quite medieval and in my opinion that's how I see it I just want to move that out of the way and I don't want it near my coffee but but this deck for me would have lent itself really well to being a pip deck it could have gone medieval um, it, it just has got I don't know. I don't think it's got great. It's a matte finish. The cards are a lovely size, um, and it just it. If this had been a pip style deck, I I would have probably been even more excited. I don't think it matters. I mean, it's a ride away style deck, and it's beautiful. I don't have a problem with it in any way at all I just think because of her beautiful artwork the way she she draws it, it would lend itself to that um, and it, it just feels the colors are warm and inviting it has um, it has a, a very natural uh, energy. I mean, I did a reading, um, an introduction with it, an interview. I do interviews for all my decks um, because I like to, uh, I suppose I like them to have a purpose or a place. Isn't that an amazing tower card? And although you've got the, the lightning, what I like is that you've also got the sort of flames coming out. So this depiction of the tower as being an internal um, change uh, as I think it was originally originally in the older decks it, if you look at the tower it represented sort of internal change as opposed to an external force coming in and I'm taking too long on this aren't I aren't they beautiful these lovely three ladies and I can't I don't know 
if we've got the no they all look the same age but sometimes obviously it's the crone maiden um, and mother the fact that these have been wood burned um, it's I just oh, I love it I love the simplicity of the artwork because it kind of does have that throwback to being a medieval style deck. It's just fun. It's got a lot of, um, I mean, and this is a wonderful, I think this is a wonderful ten of, of wands. Um, I'm sure that's got a name. I've said, obviously that's, you know, a way a lot of uh, cultures do carry um, bags. And so always nice to see different aspects brought into a deck that almost looks like the lady of the lake with her hand coming out of the, the lake this beautiful idyllic four of wands and you get to walk through the path through the two wands to this idyllic house you see and again it's got that kind of pip going on with the two I don't know if I wouldn't call those necessary children two people under the sun and again the three lovers the man between the two ladies I just love this tank I love it so much uh, rain cloud bless her that was me yesterday actually that was how I felt yesterday you know I think we've got the Sun in the background I don't think that's the moon and she's standing there with this rain cloud over her head the six of swords so we, we're, we're back to that RWS depiction because it's a pip obviously and then we've got the two of wands he's holding the world interesting oh I nearly dropped it the king of um, swords and he's got if you can see he's holding a, a white rose which I thought was really interesting the usual depiction of the three of swords as probably anybody who knows my channel knows is I struggle with this image because to my mind it has nothing to do with heartbreak it's intellect so I'm not I've never really found it possible to connect with this depiction of um, the three of swords we have the lovely fool and he is um, dressed in what you would I suppose call them the medieval fool outfit his dog is sitting patiently um, the sun's coming out, there's a rainbow, so, because they've got, I mean, I love medieval history, um, it's, oh, I didn't do it at school, um, I did practical matters that I needed to, to get a job, but I wish I could do it now, but I make up for it, I, I read a lot of medieval history, well, I did before tarot came into my life, isn't she the most beautiful high priestess? So we've got the black and white columns and we've got the moon and I think she's got her foot in this there's like a, a pond of water or something beneath her I just think that is a really powerful image we have the star I love this one because she's got the water or greens coming up and into her, her jug and then flowing out the other one it's lovely sorry I don't do announcements about nudity because I just think well in all fairness a deck without it is probably not a deck is it we tend to have it in everything the nine of pentacles she's got her little bird I think the, the the lovely blue backgrounds for the sun it makes gives it a lovely sunny feel, doesn't it? Makes it feel very warm. 
and he looks like a page of, of swords, doesn't he? He looks quite young and youthful and he's wishing his wand around in the air. Lovely moon card with a lovely smiley face. And we have the, what is, it isn't a crab, is it? What is that at the bottom? Is it a crayfish? That's, I think it's a crayfish. And do you know what? I still don't think I know the significance of that. I need to look that up in the world so we have the four images and um, to me that's quite um, tarot de marseille style really with the eye at the bottom it's interesting the chariot not much movement there a bit of movement but not a, a lot of movement i think this is just the one that's wonderful death card he is so cute I mean, isn't he just, he, she, could be she. Again, holding that lovely white rose. Beautiful card, love it. Seven of, of wands. Uh, holding this deck, um, shuffling this deck is lovely. Queen of swords with a, also holding a, 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 a rose, a sword. I love this card. They haven't got horses. This reminds me of, of Monty Python. The um, is it the Quest for the Grail? I, I I've only watched I think that one or a couple of them, but that is what that reminds me of. And I think somebody else said it too. It might have even been Tr Tracy from Temperance Tower. I'm not sure, but it absolutely does. I this is one of my, if not my all-time favourite strength card. Um, and this was one of the reasons why I bought this deck because I just fell in love with that image and I thought it was so beautiful. Um, interesting devil. I, I think that's a, a really not. I like the way that the, the little people are in his hands. So they're sort of captured in there. Here we have the Emperor, he's in a lot of red in this particular depiction. I don't know why that doesn't want to focus now. Sorry guys, you know me. Um, the Seven of Cups. She's a very stern justice card. And here we have the magician. It's a wonderful coat he's wearing with all the different colours on it. It's just beautiful nighttime sky. Her artwork is just lovely. And the page of cups. I don't know whether the light's changed a bit or whether I've just been rubbish at showing these from the beginning. Three of wands. Big sun in the sky there. And I love the fact that there's this lovely, these crows just sitting there watching. <laughs> Yeah, not so much juggling in, in this particular image of the Two of Pentacles, but um, holding them. I suppose it depends how Rider Waite Smith you want to go with the depiction. We have the four. Looks chilled. I quite like that image. I think that's actually quite nice. Two of Pentacles. Look at this, look at the wheel and the way that the lion sort of putting his paw up to this ball at the bottom. It's just so pretty. I think the Empress is beautiful in this day. I, I, if I had the money, I would have to get a second one of this as a backup because I just think it's beautiful. I don't know how well that's showing, but she's beautiful, isn't she? With her white rabbit or hair. Four of 
And again, another um, variance for me is I don't like the Four of Pentacles to be associated with greed um, and miserly. I think fours are the stability. It's about making sure that you keep your balance. Veronica Jude made a very good uh, interpretation of, of it. Just, you know, check that you are, you know, what's coming out isn't over what's coming in and just keeping a balance. The hermit, isn't he wonderful? Lighting the way. Is he coming or is he going from wherever he's been? The stars in the sky. So I just wanted to show this deck because like I said, I'm I just if I didn't do it today I don't think I would have done it and I'm, I think that that for the ace with all the blues in it is just beautiful. Beautiful temperance cards. We've got the sun and the moon in there. So that's the deck and um, I, all I can say is I, I wouldn't be without this deck. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I, I've got a couple of shout outs actually. Um, firstly to um, the Cottage Witch. Um, her channel I think has been going since January and um, it's, a, it's a lovely channel. If you haven't checked her out, definitely go over there. She has some really interesting um, videos and um, I'm always in awe of, of, of witches who share their craft because their insights are so in, invaluable to, to people like myself who are very new. Um, I'm going to take my glass off because I'm glaring at everybody with them on, but that just makes me look uh, even worse. But anyway, um, yeah, she's got some lovely um, videos up. Um, she did one on her grimoire which I really found interesting I know she said she's not going to do any more sadly which is fair enough a grimoire is a personal um, thing and I completely understand that the bits that perhaps aren't personal would be lovely uh, to see because for me I love it when when you guys share and it, it's such a good teaching tool um, and I adore it. The second channel I want to shout out to is Tarot Breeze. I absolutely adore this lady. She is wonderful. Um, Louise, I believe, but I have been watching a lot of, of YouTube and uh, so, but she is a, has a wonderful collection of Tarot de Marseille and I love, love, love her channel. So please check her out, Tarot Breeze. Um, one of the things that I enjoyed um, was the way she uh, reads tarot at de Marseille. Um, and interesting enough, uh, that since I did my course with Brad, I was watching the lovely Magdalena from Wolf of Coins and Louise at Tarot Breeze, and both of them have got videos up where they read um, tarot de Marseille and how they read it. And it really clicked having got to the point where I am now it wouldn't have necessarily clicked before um, and I think that's one of the lovely parts about this journey is the things that I've learned and the things that I have read and experienced with the tarot when I started when I go back to it now I'm seeing it completely differently because my experiences and what I've learned and what I understand have changed and we're constantly changing and that's why although a lot of us want to do the depth year it's it's also not just about what using what you've got but it's about learning to resonate with with what you like and what you don't like and for me the tarot has been a great teacher um, of me it is teaching me to actually focus on learning about me. Um, with four children grown and grandchildren, I haven't had a lot of time really, I would say in my life, to spend 
looking at me personally. So tarot is a wonderful tool for self-development, but it's it's a wonderful teaching about yourself. So the depth year for me might not have been quite as I envisaged it was going to be, but what it's brought to me is things that I don't like. It's it's taught me what I do like and things that I thought I wouldn't like that I've liked and vice versa, which I, I think I've already said. So there is um, there's a, a lot of wonderful channels out there sharing a lot of wonderful things and I it, it's delightful for me to be able to learn so much from far more experienced people whether it's in which craft style things um, or whether it's in uh, tarot uh, I'm constantly learning I am the under apprentice of everything I'm learning everything from scratch like a newbie the fool in in the beginning of the journey who doesn't have any anything and i'm still that person that's full because even though i might be nearly a year on i am still very much learning and everything is um kind of all in the ether where i'm sort of plucking bits and pieces out and and kind of pulling it together and then it changes again and that comes out it's a bit like when i do my collage uh, material collage pictures you know you, you kind of bring fabrics together and bits and pieces and then you throw bits out and you're not quite sure what you you're going to use and what you aren't going to use so I, I love it when um your experience and your knowledge is shared because for me it is an amazing skill that you have um, and watching the, the tarot spreads that Magdalena and um, Tarot Breeze have done was so insightful for me in how to read Marseille. Um, I've struggled with the numerology and I've struggled with bringing a lot of elements into Tarot de Marseille um, because I think that it, it, they serve such different things for me um, and it all kind of started to click when I watched their um, videos so thank you ladies for your uh, content because they're they're wonderful and there are just this wealth of people out there who share and have knowledge and it's incredible what you get from YouTube so guys thank you very much and I hope you have a wonderful weekend many blessings Take care. Oh, yeah, one last thing I didn't forget. To, my husband, bless him, has just acquired an Il Manigello. Now, I'm not, I've got a couple of Il Manigellos, but I've kind of gone off on a slightly different path. He, on the other hand, has, has got quite into them. And I'm hoping that he is going to put up a video today of his newly acquired Il Menigello. So hopefully that will be out there, up there. Uh, but if you haven't checked his channel out, it is the Search for Sound. And he has some, he's gonna put some more content up on singing bowls and um, he has a newly acquired uh, drum um, that he's been showing and uh, now he's got some Il Menigellos to put up as well so if you get chance to check him out please do and hopefully he'll get around to putting up a video of that but uh, it's rather exciting he's got uh, yeah he's got some some nice bits to show anyway guys many thanks take care and uh, much love bye bye